Welcome to the Brian Foltis Behavioral Finance Podcast, where we unravel the mysteries of behavioral finance and unlock the secrets to making smarter, more informed decisions with your money. Now, here's your host, Dr. Brian Foltis. Welcome back, everybody. It's the Brian Foltis Behavioral Finance Podcast. It's me, Brian Foltis, and I'm with the lovely Mandy Foltis. Hello. Hello. And we are getting ready for part three here. Are you ready for part three? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. Well, if we're slurring our words, it's because... Last number three of wine. We're happy <laughs> on life. <laughs> well, That's a glass number I three. Think, I just think everyone's giving... You know, they're getting some insight into real life. Like our Friday night action? I, I tell <laughs> ridiculous stories to my classes. And oh, I, I do go there. And then I tell them, I was like, you know what? I'm giving you 40% of my overall ridiculousness. Like, you don't even... They're, they're seeing maybe half of, of my ridiculousness. And so... How are you getting that number? Huh? How are you getting I just that know number? that there's an extra gear that I have that they don't see. I tell them funny, crazy stories, but there's just way more that, that mm. I could share. So <laughs> anyway, today we're going to be talking about combining our finances and how that is going to affect both our life purpose and our futures. And so the last two episodes, we've talked with Mandy about our past, how we met, how we took our previous experiences with our finances and then brought it into the second episode, which is our present and how we combined our finances and how we converse about it. And now it's time to talk about the future, how we talk about planning and how we talk about how we actually use our money. And so this has been a big pivotal change with a lot that's going on even very, very recently with what we're wanting to do with our lives and how we're aligning our money to achieve those things. So I'm putting it on you, Fancy Manders. <laughs> um, tell us about where, as far as like life purpose and thinking about the future, like what... What has been recent on your plate? What are you what have you been working on here? Brian. Because I I've did a whole episode on mental health and walked everybody through how I didn't think I needed help but then oh. got help and yeah. and how that has changed everything for me mm. and having a you know increased mental health what that has done for all different aspects of my life and how that fits into now my life purpose and, and what I want to do. Mm. And so I've been going on this journey as well. And so you have too at, at the same time. And mm. so you can, you don't have to go deep into the story, but <laughs> you know, just from like a career standpoint, there's some very real changes that have been happening. And so if you mind sharing that. <laughs> oh. All right. You just kind of dove in there, didn't mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. And I would say I hit my life purpose story after you. It's been some time mm -hmm. after you. You had kind of marched forward with that, and I was still. You were struggling. Right? I was. Yeah. I was. Yes. So I'm an operating room nurse. <laughs> I don't always enjoy what I do as a nurse. I'm sure there are other medical professionals out there that can identify with that. And I'm not going to get too far into that because that is just. Well, yeah. And, and so that's I, a lot. Yeah, of course. And I know that. When I tell you I had a bad day, that's not, <laughs> I realized very quickly, that is the dumbest thing I can possibly say. <laughs> oh, I had a bad day. Why? Oh, the kids weren't nice to me. Oh and, and it's like, well, and then 
you know, compared to what a bad day looks like for you in an operating room and the stuff that happens, you it's not even worth me saying anything anymore because of what you have to deal with. I'm going to I'm going to just kind of like jump in there because my thoughts on comparison have changed quite a bit. Yeah. I used to love to do that. I used to love to be like, "Oh yeah, well, blah blah blah." One up. Yeah. Yes, and I don't feel that way so much anymore. I don't want to live in that kind of comparison culture. You can have a bad day even though it doesn't measure up or whatever to mine, like that doesn't mean, doesn't yeah. mean like you didn't have a bad day for you. You know what I mean? Like we don't need to comparison all the time because I'm sure that I could look at other people's stuff and be blown away and be like, oh wow, I should never complain. But the thing is, that doesn't mean that you're, you're not having a bad day or or a good time. I right? I appreciate your sensitivity <laughs> to that. However, I do realize that you know you have people who are coding and they're <laughs> dying, and nobody's coding or dying in my class or, sure, or anything but, like that. And so I just mm, anyway the the point is to be quite fair though. Sorry, I know I keep interrupting you, but to be quite fair, like a lot of my bad days don't have anything to do with that. They don't. Nurses out there, y'all know. Oh. You're well, on your nurse Blaken over there. Yeah. I know what's up. We yeah. all know. But the thing is, it's a toxic environment. Yeah. And I don't want to be in it anymore. I don't feel a purpose around it. I have never been, quote unquote, called to nursing. I chose it because it was a good career path. I already worked in the operating room. I was like, this is a clear, this is the clear path. I'm going to choose that. It's easy for me to obtain, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously had a lot of challenges along the way, but so to speak, it was the next logical step in my career. And so I did that. And I've been in the operating room 16 years and I'm unhappy. Yeah. Here I am. So what do I do? Yeah. And and this is a trick. You're not alone in this. There are many other nurses out there and people in the medical profession who are making good money, who are doing this. They've been doing it for a while. They had good intentions even to start out with and, and felt like it was their purpose, but now are either really burnt out or just not feeling it anymore. Mm. But then in order to walk away is to mm. really... I, how they reconcile it in their in their finances how do you walk away from making x amount of money and how do you move into something else that you're so secure with your job that you could just pick whatever wherever whenever more or less and 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 move into something that is uncertain mm. this is a dilemma i believe that many people have Huge. and and i i know that you've wrestled with this and so kind of gone through this path but it became very very clear like you're very burnt out on this and you're over yes. it and yeah. so all right so keep going down this path of, of exploration and and what mm. what ended up happening oof the path of exploration was it was long and it was difficult and you're right i was wrestling myself and so i had to listen to all these different podcasts. There's many. Or right, what are your top ones? Oh well, you know I have a deep love for Brene Brown. Yeah. So yeah. I, <laughs> I listened to a lot of Brene Brown, and then I ended up landing on, pardon my French here, but it was a podcast called "What the Fuck Do You Want." Oh okay. That one really spoke to me. This guy is great. He's a mindset mentor. And I was like, man, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. And I kept running into things like, oh, these are deep-seated things that you know from your childhood and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't know anything. This is stupid. I hate this. It was extremely, extremely frustrating. Like, I would find myself just going through the emotions of it, anger, crying, whatever, whatever you have it, like, and I ended up finding out, oh, this 
is like my calling is actually something from my childhood I just looked at it as a hobby I didn't know it was something that I could actually do with my life and let let me be clear like there's a lot of fear around it which I feel like is very natural when you first start something you're stepping into something especially from a field that is like hey guess what you're guaranteed this amount of money you can do these things but you're going to be miserable right so I had to learn the transition into this and so my thing was I've been a creator for a long time I was doing stuff growing up with my dad my dad's creative artistic like all of these things um I wanted to learn different things for so many years and then I just thought that's hobby category you yeah. live on that. That's what I was told, right? Like you shut that stuff down early on because people have told you over and over again, that's not a career. You should choose a career that's safe. You should do this. You should do that. Not something that scares the shit out of you. Yeah. And so that's the crossroad that I'm at now. Yeah. And so I'm trying to step into back into the art world and I'm trying to exit nursing altogether. Yeah. Because I don't have any true passion for that. It's yeah. a money maker, and yep. that's it. That's yeah. it. Like I go there, I make a paycheck, and you can speak to this. I am quite miserable mm-hmm. <laughs> when I come home. Yeah, yeah. And and I've seen your stuff. You you did our mural upstairs in our workout room, and uh, I don't know <laughs> my untrained eye. Like I've se- I know what shit looks like, and if it's and it's not like you're really, really good. And so, as as a partner and as a husband of yours, it's it's supporting and aligning with you in order for you to be that person and to create and to to do what you feel called to do. And you also are, you're doing your missions trips. You're using your nursing degree that to help true. people walk. You helped 52 people walk mm-hmm. in Vietnam last month, yeah. and. There's something that's very rewarding, and you're doing that on your own time. Yes, you're right. You're and right. So you that can is still the part of use that. That I do actually enjoy because I'm like I have learned the skill. I have this gift of. Yeah. I have this training to be able to do this thing, and I want to be able to give back with it in a way that's like. I'm actually helping somebody live a true life not just a lifestyle like oh it hurts when i golf or and i'm know? i'm 400 pounds <laughs> and i don't understand why my hip or yeah, my knee hurts yeah. yeah yeah that's it's a different beast and so giving back in that way in these countries where people live in villages and there's women and they're taking care of their whole entire families they're limping around they can barely walk we give them a new hip or a new knee yeah they have a new and i mean these people are young brian like you know our hips and knees over here are like 60 70 years old like they're oh i'm not on my game anymore i need my new hip or knee and these people are 20s to 40s yeah it's wild it's wild yeah it's a very giving back thing for me which I love doing and I will do that for free all day yeah and so now that this is coming into focus let's how does money how do finances tie into this life purpose that you're trying to to step into well (laughs) it's gonna be it's difficult it's a jump. It's a struggle for me. So I went from travel nursing, which was extremely lucrative, right? Mm-hmm. I did a lot of things with it. I felt great. I did it for a very long time. And then I was like, I'm burning out. Like, I am just burning the wick at both ends. I'm tired. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to be creative so, so bad. And... For me, it's much easier than maybe your average single listener, right? Because I have you and I have the support of you, Mm -hmm. but also I have to give up that financial freedom. I have 
you know well, you have to get a, that that certain paycheck right oh yeah and so of which course, is a yeah. big paycheck yeah and and so that's the thing right where we we look at our budget and we can see the numbers how they look when right. you, you're working full time and then you see it when you are phasing out and you're just like well that's not as rosy as <laughs> as we would like to see right. but we have a lifestyle built where we're we're still not going backwards when on a month to month basis and right. so that's that's a nice catch right that it is how- which i understand some people don't have and it's yeah. a huge risk no matter what like when you are making money no matter what when you're headed in the opposite direction it's difficult Mm -hmm. and so it is a risky step but you have to you have to just believe in yourself you have to believe in what you can do and you got to stick a foot out there yeah and this is where we've said before i've said that we want our finances to either align your finances are either going to align you with what you're supposed to do or they're going to be in your way Mm. and so there's no longer like i need x amount of dollars in order to be happy it's it's is it aligning with my life purpose or is it not Mm. yes or no and and so we've kind of created a scenario where yeah we we're going to make it align so we can actually do what what we want to do and it's create things yes and i'm happy to see you come to that conclusion to and to get there and to have our finances aligned in that way and and i'm also realizing too that i am a creator yeah, and you i'm are. in a different way <laughs> i cannot visualize even for a second what you did to our wall <laughs> but i'm happy about it and it's amazing but what i create is different ideas and different content and right dialogue and stories around it so but it's the same thing so we're when we're talking about marriage and combining finances there's also combining purposes and i have mine you have yours and then we've come together and said we're newly married now with this information what is our common purpose Mm -hmm. and so we wrote out our this was in italy on our honeymoon where we (laughs) wrote out our credo we did of of five, six, because the six one was have lots of sex. That was number six. <laughs> that was it's very important to put on the back end of no that. No shocker but, there. But <laughs> but the five were in align basically aligning our purposes with each other in order to create and to help people and to have experiences that are both beneficial are nice for us but also that is making the world a better place and so and having lots of sex sex. (laughs) so when we're talking about our future it's it's a lot about purpose and what we're trying to do and and having our our finances aligned is there anything else around the future that we haven't had a ton of conversations around that but preparing for the future or mm. anything like that that we've we had to talk about or need to talk about well i think there is something but a thought before that is that we're even having conversation mm-hmm. right like i think a lot of people don't have these conversations they're scared to have these conversations they're not compatible with their partners in these there's a lot going on, right? Yeah. Like, I think relationships today need to find a way to be able to do this stuff, mm-hmm. like, respectfully and out of love for each other. Yeah. I think one of the things upcoming for us that's not in the fun category is like the aging parent. Yeah. Which, AKA, would be my parents because both of Brian's have already passed but there's a lot going on there yeah and i don't think we are going to move along with them um without some sort of financial yeah something Mm. so yeah and that's um these are some of the things to talk about we're 
you if you have an aging parent or as we're trying to think about retirement, what that's going to look like, when that's going to happen, kids, when they're going to start moving out, what they're going to do, <laughs> if they're going to do it. No. Live in um, your basement forever. <laughs> and and even to the point where it's seeing your parents' age has made us reflect on we need to get our estate planning in order mm -hmm. and our living wills updated and these things that can get pushed along. So those are the things that we have to work on as well. Right. And it's on our radar, but we have to have open dialogue about it. So you yeah. can kind of see the the life purpose part is nice and fun when you're in alignment. And then you have these other <laughs> things that are like, well, yeah, estate planning, doing living wills, not as fun. Right. But, but they're like, they're also real things that you need to do because if you don't do them now, you're going to pay for it later. Yeah. You're going to pay for it later. And it is not fun. It's not fun to deal with that stuff. It's not fun to make decisions for other people when you don't know their wishes. And yeah, just do it. Just do it. Yank it like you're starting a lawnmower. <laughs> That's my Elaine Venice. Anyway, any final thoughts about the future? I have a lot of thoughts. Oh, let's go. I have a lot of thoughts because I feel like people don't put any thought into it at all. Yeah. They don't have these conversations. Like, what are you thinking? Like, people just, for instance, like my parents have a lot of thoughts about them. I love them deeply, but they floated through life. Every day they got up, they just did the same damn thing every day. Like, did they really think about what am I going to do today? What are my goals today? What do I want my life to look like? Yeah. And I wish more people thought about that stuff because you and I have in-depth conversation about that kind of stuff all the time. And I just, I wish more people did because yeah. I feel like you fall into unhappiness when you are just getting up out of bed, doing the same thing every day. It does not have to be that way. Yeah. And there's a little uncomfortable you have to be uncomfortable for a little while a lot of a it. lot of um, the time a lot um, yeah like i was very uncomfortable finding my purpose like what is it and it nagged me and it drove mm -hmm. me crazy and i was probably insane for a while like mm -hmm. yeah and <laughs> i don't know what i don't know what the actual number is but i, I think the old i listened to old earl nightingale Ugh, uh, don't do good that stuff don't do it but he <laughs> he said that it's about 95% if you were to go around and ask people just a random sample why do you wake up in the morning mm. he said that about 19 out of 20 people will say they don't go know. to work they don't know or they say I'm gonna go to work and go, go through work. the motions mm -hmm. and, yeah yeah and there's one out of 20 people might be able to say I have an actual purpose here's why I get out of bed in the morning yeah in order to do this right um and that's where we're trying to move the needle and that's why even in my behavioral finance podcast why I'm spending time talking about mental health life purpose because I want to move that number up right in my world and I've repositioned my conversations with students as well around that to tell them that it's not about just getting up and making a paycheck and going working hard to make a certain amount of money it's it's to actually think about what your life purpose is and to to work on that and fulfill that and it's going to give you a way better life experience yeah it's such a different so, ball game yeah it's it's so different and like figuring that out can be really difficult and I struggled with it. Mm -hmm. I struggled with it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it was very aggravating. But there's many resources out there, such yeah. as the things we named earlier. I am so in interested <laughs> in this. Can you tell me more about the life purpose story? That is my Renee. That's, That's my your Renee, Renee Brown. Because she gets so excited. She'll, she'll stop. Say, stop. Tell me more. Yeah, that's, my, <laughs> that's exactly it. Tell me more. I love her. I would love to know. Look, she's fantastic. 
I love her. Yeah. I love her. I know. know. She did so much for me. I'm just saying, she got the wheels turning, and there's some rusty wheels in there that, like, nobody's ever touched in their life because I didn't have this growing up, so... Mm -hmm. I love your impression. Thank you. That's what I was going for. It was spot on. Pretty much. Exactly. Yeah, she's going to call you up wrong. tomorrow like, for sure. Okay. Uh-huh. You're the next TED Talk. I I can just feel uh-huh. it. Talking about vulnerability. She's so good. She helped me. She is. Vulnerability and shame. It it's such a real thing. It is real. But let me tell you, yeah. you got to go through all the steps. You got to go through yeah. all the stuff. You got to figure it out. You got to dive in. And the thing is, you have to accept it. But most of all, you got to believe it. You got to believe it. Yeah. You got to believe. Hardwire. I am this. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do this. And it's hard because then you have these little gremlins creep in that tell you, like, you can't do this. That's how are you going to make money off of this? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? And it confronts you with all the issues of it. And and in the meantime, like really all you need to do is just do it. Just create. That's what my husband says all the time. Just get out there and create. Yeah, and create. Yep. And then I have to do that myself. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we're all creators. We are in some facet. And that's when you're at your best, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, there. That's a great. <laughs> damn, dropping. Hashtag next, Brene Boom. Brown over here. Brene. <laughs> Tell me more about uh, any other thoughts. Oh, I have so many. But yeah, I don't want to bore these people. Yeah, and I'm on my last leg of wine. Okay. So well, we should wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for making it through part three of Mandy. And Brian, combining finances, talking about our future. This is a really important topic. But if you have any comments, I would love to hear from you. And uh, you can reach out to me in in any form. If you want to find me on brianfoltis.com or on Instagram, it's Brian Foltis. Hopefully, I'll have my Facebook in order. You can see me there. Some of you older. That's an older group, right? Facebook, Facebook, yeah, and that's you, why I was like, I don't even, I don't even know. But you need to bust maybe. into Instagram if you're gonna yeah, Instagram, the crowd. yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> and really young, everybody. I mean, TikTok, but I can't yeah, even speak to I'm that. Gonna, I'm gonna try to do content on on TikTok this Ooh, summer. Look at you, yeah, TikTok. I'm gonna do a lot of dances. TikTok, <laughs> so many dances, <laughs> <laughs> so many behavioral finance dances. Wow. Yeah. I'll choreograph. It's going to be so good. (laughs) Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Brian Foltis Behavioral Finance Podcast. We hope you found our exploration into the fascinating world of human behavior and finance, both enlightening and thought-provoking. Be sure to subscribe for future episodes. And until next time, stay curious and financially savvy.